Former President Donald Trump has officially been charged in a Manhattan courtroom. He entered not guilty pleas for 34 counts of falsifying business records. These charges stem from his alleged role in 2016 hush money payments to two women to keep them quiet about alleged affairs that could have damaged his chances of winning the presidential election. Joining us now to discuss the charges are Melvin Butch Hollowell, managing partner at the Miller Law Firm, and former corporation counsel for the city of Detroit, and that's both you, yes. <laughs> and Matt Steely, <laughs> a spokesperson for the Michigan Conservative Coalition. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for being here. You're welcome. With everything that happened today, what are your initial reactions? Well, we had the indictment unsealed today, you know, so at 2.15, uh, when the former president was in the courtroom, the 34 charges uh, were spelled out. And so essentially what this is, is falsifying business records in order to defraud an election. And Prosecutor Bragg indicated that the predicates here were showing that that payment to Stormy Daniels that was reimbursed was in order to pull the wool over someone's eyes and those at someone was the voter. So and I, the last thing I, I guess I'll say is, Having hush payments isn't in and of itself a crime. What makes it, you know, Harvey Weinstein did that with his NDAs. It isn't, it's unseemly, but it's not illegal. What makes it illegal is that it was connected to the election. Mm. And your reaction? Well, I think that all of these charges are problematic for a couple of reasons. Number one, New York has a five year statute of limitations, and this all went down in 2016. So right off the bat, they're going to have a very difficult threshold justifying why these charges should be considered since the statute's already passed. The next problem is, is that one of the key witnesses here uh, that's, that's now um, changed his testimony evidently and said that this is a conspiracy, that's why these are felony charges, not misdemeanor, is um, Michael Cohen, who is a known convicted felon who's perjured himself already. So that I think you got a credibility issue there. And then um, lastly, uh, this is all um, in regards to the federal election where the state of New York really has no standing. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all proceeds. How serious are these charges in the sense that will the former president actually go to prison? Well, under the penal code of the state of New York, and it's 175.10, it's, it's called a Class E felony, which means it's one to four years. What Prosecutor Bragg said at his post-arraignment press conference today is these are bread and butter cases for prosecutors in their office in terms of these business fraud allegations. Here's the other thing. This is a seasoned prosecutor. He's been a uh, prosecutor for 24 years. He understands the threshold for getting a conviction is high, um, beyond a reasonable doubt. So he said, we've got tapes, we've got emails, we've got everything that's attached to those 34 business records. And uh, so they believe the case is very strong and they presented a uh, strong uh, pr a presentation today. But what about that statute of limitations that you were talking about? Is that not going to come into play? Now, what they've indicated is that um, it was a continuing series of acts by the president, even after the election, that orchestrated uh, how the payments would be made. He held back certain checks. He held back certain uh, payments. He held back certain things. So that uh, that statute of limitations apparently is not going to be an issue. Matt, you were talking about this, that there's potentially issues with this case. Do you think Trump will spend time in prison? No, not a chance. In fact, I, I think there's a very strong chance that most of this will get thrown out. Why do you believe that? Because I just think that they, what they've done is they've taken state misdemeanor charges and then said that this is actually a conspiracy so Trump was involved in a conspiracy, and that's what bumped them up to a felony. And uh, I think that there's a real big burden to try and prove a conspiracy was taking place here. And um, even so, with the continuation that Butch had just mentioned, most of those are through the middle of 2017, which is more than five years ago. So I'm sure all of that's going to be argued. It's going to be fascinating to watch it unfold. And, um, you know, when Hillary Clinton was running for president, uh, ultimately her campaign paid hush money to the uh, Steele dossier uh, people. And um, 
she was fined for it by the FEC, but it didn't rise to the level of a crime. Uh, the Federal Election Commission ultimately should be the ones investigating this. They've investigated part of it in the past, and Trump paid a $200,000 fine for this transaction. So it's been visited already. So I think it's a stretch to, to do this in state court. I'd have to say, it, it, so the, it, when the indictment was unsealed today, the it, conspiracy is not a part of it. Uh, no, and it, it's also important to say that um, these charges were also brought under New York law. So the falsification of these business records is prosecuted all the time under New York law. And um, having false records in connection with a candidacy is being prosecuted under New York election law. And so that's the other thing. You, uh, once you do these hush money things, you've got to report them. Um, if you make a campaign expenditure, you have to report them. I teach election law. And so he didn't. And he held back because of, uh, in order to try to defraud the voters, to not let them understand what was going on. It's a crime. In the end, this is going to be a lonely period where he's going to have to sit there and listen to the evidence, and a jury's going to be listening to that evidence. And they did not bring this case unless they believed very strongly that they have enough evidence to convict. What does Alvin Bragg have to prove here during all of this? I mean, other people have looked at this and have decided not to bring charges against Donald Trump. Trump believes this is a witch hunt. Well, there's three other active cases for a total of four cases. And if you look at them on their individual merits, each one seems to be politically motivated, which is the wrong use of our um, judicial system. You know, when we start weaponizing our court system for political purposes, that's a problem. And I'm hoping that ultimately uh, this is all brought out into the open, that he has the opportunity for a jury of his peers to hear this and that justice is served. If he truly broke the law, then, then he deserves to face the same penalties as any other citizen. The criminal justice system is a weapon for a good reason. You need to hold people accountable if they break the law. And when you call the Georgia Secretary of State saying, I want to find 15,000 votes, and when you incite people to violence in January 6 and try to overturn a national election, these are things for which there are consequences. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining us with this insight here on an unprecedented case involving former President Donald Trump. Matt Seeley and Melvin Butch Holloway, thank you so much for being with us tonight.